Thursday, May 2nd, everyone. Hunter here at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we are looking at more severe weather potential today and tomorrow across parts of the United States with damaging winds, large hail, and the threat for a few tornadoes. Then as we look at the weekend forecast for you, we're going to look at the temperature and precipitation trends as well. And a new strong storm system will bring the chance for heavy rainfall and severe weather potential. But for what area? Areas in the country. We'll be answering that question later on in today's weather forecast. Hey, if you are new here to Weather on the Go, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you have my videos and live streams right there at your fingertips. Also, be sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's look back here at Tuesday, April the 30th. We had a severe weather outbreak from Iowa all the way down to Texas here. 13 total tornado reports that day. We had a lot of hail and wind reports as well. Well, and then fast forwarding to yesterday on Wednesday, May 1st, you can see we did have 16 tornado reports from Kansas down here into western Texas, a lot of those even in the Texas panhandle. So that two-day period, Tuesday, April 30th into Wednesday, May 1st, we saw 29 tornado reports across mainly the Great Plains, but even parts of the Midwest as well. And now looking here at the weather out your door this morning, looking at temperatures colder out across the West, across the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. We're waking up to temperatures into the 20s, even the teens in the higher elevations out West. Much more warm conditions across portions of the Southeast. We have temperatures into the 60s and the 70s to start off the morning. Look at the afternoon highs this afternoon across portions of the Ohio Valley, the southeast up into the mid-Atlantic, well into the middle, even the upper 80s this afternoon. While it's a little bit cooler across the west, where we start cool, we're going to end cool across the west here. Temperatures into the 40s and 50s out there in the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. Going into Friday, same thing. Not as many 80s out here across the east, but we're still seeing some spring-like temperatures into the 60s and the 70s out there. Now, we do have to deal with more severe weather potential, unfortunately here. It is severe weather season, so you can see here today on Thursday, there isn't a marginal risk of severe weather, a level one out of five stretching from parts of Wisconsin, lower Michigan, and southeastern Minnesota down here through parts of the Midwest down into the Southern Plains in that dark green shaded color. We also have a level two out of five, a slight risk of severe weather here in northwestern Texas around the Wichita Falls region down toward Abilene and west of the DFW Metroplex. That is a slight risk of severe weather. We are keeping an eye on the hail risk down there. We could be seeing some significant two inch diameter hail or larger that is hen egg size or larger down there in northwest Texas. Again, around Wichita Falls and Abilene and then we have a threat for some wind as well pretty low threat all across the board for 60 plus mile per hour winds we'll keep an eye on that and a pretty low threat for tornadoes but the tornado threat is highest again here across northwest Texas where we have that dry line set up and we have a little bit more turning of the winds with height we'll keep an eye on that a two percent shading for tornadoes all the way up there into southern Wisconsin eastern Iowa and northern Illinois we'll also keep an eye on that let's look at the setup for severe weather today we have the no of those dew points reaching up into the Midwest today. That's why we have the severe weather potential further up to the Midwest. We have dew points in the 50s and 60s all the way up there. A little bit more rich moisture down here into northwest Texas. Dew points closing in on the low 70s. That will increase our instability a lot further down here up to around 4,000 joules per kilogram. That is very strong, if not extreme, instability. And that's what's fostering that very large hail threat with those two inch plus diameter hailstones. Looking at the low level jet as we go through today, very weak across the board here as we go through today. So the significant tornado parameter space is pretty low as well. It's highest down here in the Northwest Texas around tens out of tens, but that's if a storm forms in that environment that it could produce a tornado. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Let's go with the timing of the storms this morning. Nice looking squall line here from around La Crosse and Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, stretching down through the University of Iowa there in Iowa City, down here through the Kansas City region, and then down towards the Wichita area. 
We do have a nice squall line of storms that is pushing through. Also, another MCS down here into East Texas, stretching in towards Shreveport, Tyler, Texas, just north of the Houston area this morning, producing some very heavy rain, maybe some on and off of very strong winds as well, and some hail. We'll keep an eye on that. Going into the afternoon, additional storm development is likely at the heat of the day. We'll keep an eye on that. Most of this, though, is going to be scattered, folks, so we're not going to be seeing some widespread storms for everybody here here, but if you do get under a storm, expect the threat for the, or at least the potential for severe weather, damaging winds, large hail, and also a tornado. And then as we go into this evening, see the, uh, the storm mode will remain isolated to scattered here. But again, those supercells will be strongest down into northwest Texas, west of the DFW Metroplex, where the instability is maximized here with this setup in the United States. And then as we go into early Friday morning, we could see a complex of storms moving through the Dallas-Fort Worth area on a weakening phase as we get towards the sunrise time frame on Friday. Now, speaking of Friday, another marginal risk of severe weather across portions of Nebraska, eastern Colorado, into Kansas there, western and northwestern Oklahoma, and into the Texas Pan handle that could foster a threat for a tornado or two from the Oklahoma panhandle down into the eastern and central Texas panhandle there into northwest Texas. Looking at the setup on Friday, instability wise, you can see dew points into the 60s, instability up to around 2,000, maybe 3,000 joules per kilogram. So some moderate to strong cape out there to support some storms. Friday morning, pretty quiet across the board as we go into the afternoon, isolated coverage of storms developing. One or two of these storms could produce a tornado and then more of a complex and MCS of storms as that low level jet increases Friday night could foster a threat again for some stronger winds really not looking at anything too significant but watching out mainly for the heavy rainfall you can see the rainfall amounts through your Friday morning commute you can see we're going to uh, see a lot of rainfall here across the Mississippi Valley. And looking at this as well, through Friday, we can see a moderate risk of flash flooding down here, just north of Houston here into southeastern Texas, a large slight risk extending all the way up there into Iowa, southwest Wisconsin, and near the Mississippi River there in northwestern Illinois. And the heaviest rainfall with that moderate risk of flash flooding, we could be seeing over four inches of rain here in a very short amount of time, folks. This is within a 24 to 48 hour period into Southeast Texas. That's why we have that higher risk for flash flooding. Zooming in here for the weekend, looking at the Saturday, May 4th into Sunday, May 5th time frame, a lot of us are going to see different temperatures. Across the east, we're going to be seeing mainly warmer than normal temperatures. Across the north, a little cooler than normal, still warmer than normal there in the Rockies, and then another pocket of colder than normal temperatures across the west. That's as our big trough starts to develop, especially by Sunday as it moves ashore out here. Let's look at those low temperatures for Saturday morning. Frost, hard freeze conditions will be likely across the northern Rockies and the northwestern plains here. And this is including the western Dakotas into the panhandle of Nebraska down into Colorado here. Definitely keeping an eye on that. While Saturday morning, it's a lot more mild across the eastern and southeastern U.S. And that will be a higher springboard of which to start as we get into Saturday afternoon. High temperatures, June-like temperatures down here into the Gulf coast into the 90s and then see in a much cooler air mass across the north that's as we have a frontal uh, frontal boundary that's moving across these regions with 40s and 50s there Sunday morning may see some patchy frost up here in the North Dakota northern Minnesota or northern Wisconsin that remains to be seen temperatures kind of marginal there middle to upper 30s but then we'll really quickly rebound Sunday afternoon into the 60s up there so a cooler morning uh, giving way to a warmer afternoon and again more of the those June-like temperatures down across the southeast coast. Very warm there in Florida. A lot of 80s and even some 90s Sunday afternoon. Looking at precipitation trends through the weekend on Saturday, it looks a lot more menacing than it will be. This is going to remain a lot of, you know, a lot of dry hours here as we go into Saturday is the gist of it here. So don't go canceling any outdoor plans. A lot of dry hours here, even though you see green on the map. Just some pop-up afternoon showers and storms. Our new trough begins to develop out west. Very heavy snows in the Cascades, the southern Cascades there into Oregon, and also the northern Sierras in northern California on Saturday. Then as we go into Sunday time frame, again, looking more menacing than it really will be. Maybe more organized storm activity down in the southern plains from Texas, northward into Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, and Arkansas. But other than that, the east coast, a lot of green here, but plenty of dry hours, just some pop-up isolated 
related to scattered storms. Don't go canceling any of your Sunday plans there either. And then as we go into Sunday out west, that trough comes in, very heavy snows into the mountain ranges out west here, the Cascades, the Sierras, the Rockies. We'll keep a close eye on that. Precipitation-wise this weekend, Saturday, May 4th, into Sunday, May 5th, the heaviest rains will be down here into the southern plains where we noted that we have some more organized activity, especially for Sunday into Sunday night from Kansas into Oklahoma and especially Texas over here into Arkansas, maybe into Missouri as well. Very heavy precipitation out west and this will actually likely be more so in the form of heavier snows for the Cascades, the Sierras and the Rockies. Uh, the Cascades and Sierras could be seeing over a foot of snow respectively as we go into the weekend. So keeping a close eye on that. That same storm system out west, that trough, will begin to move ashore on Sunday, Sunday night, and we have a ridge downstream, and whenever you see a ridge out east and a trough out west, that spells out trouble, folks, because that will eventually eject across the plains. That will happen on Monday, and then as we go into Tuesday, a really strong low-pressure system down here into North Dakota, and that is actually going to be a very big deal as we go into early next week on Tuesday. So looking at the pressure and we got a 994 millibar low developing there in western Wyoming on Sunday. That will deepen as it crosses out into the high plains there into western South Dakota on Monday to a 988 millibar low, deepening low pressure there. Monday night, look at that, an occluding low down to 977 millibars, very strong low pressure system there. And it stays at a 978 millibar low as as we go into Tuesday, as it moves up there into North Dakota. So, and then we also have a low pressure developing down here into the central plains in Eastern Kansas, already strengthening as well, down to a 996 millibar low. So what does all this mean? Well, severe weather, it's May, so severe weather season Season. It's peak severe weather season here. We have a slight risk of severe weather, at level two out of five from Nebraska here, southwest Iowa into western Missouri, east central Kansas, central and eastern Oklahoma, and north Texas near the Red River Valley. Very similar areas we've been seeing severe weather for the past several weeks here, it seems like. And a look at the dry line here, folks, as we go into Monday. Very big dry line, a lot of drought on going out here into the west across Colorado and New Mexico. Very strong EML. And if you don't know what an EML is, it's an elevation elevated mix layer, essentially fancy wording for it's dry. So we're going to see a lot of dry air moving in across the, the Great Plains here as we go into Monday. Warm, moist advection from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up here into the high plains in the upper Midwest, catapulting those dew points into the 60s. Instability values will be at least moderate across the board, stronger further south you go. And what's concerning about the setup uh, kinematics wise on Monday is the mid-level and even low-level jet. So this is your mid-level jet here, negatively tilted trough. It's on the base of the trough. Look at these values here, over 80 knots of a mid-level jet up here into Nebraska and west central Kansas. A low-level jet already screaming in over 50 knots there on Monday afternoon will only become more widespread and robust. Monday evening over 60 knots as it crosses through Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma here. So the result will be supercell thunderstorms firing up along the dry line Monday afternoon, first isolated, and then starting to unzip those supercells down the dry line in more numerous fashion as we go through the afternoon. And then a big time squall line across portions of the plains into the Midwest Monday evening could be producing some hurricane force wind gusts, some large to very large hail, and some tornado embedded within this as well. You can see supercells possibly out ahead of the main line Monday evening. And then for right now, the Storm Prediction Center does not highlight an area for Tuesday, May 7th, but looking at the parameters here, and that's what we do, and you can see on Tuesday, 60s dew points all the way up there, perhaps into Wisconsin and lower Michigan. You can see instability up there into Wisconsin, lower Michigan, and northern Illinois even parts of Iowa, over 1,000 joules per kilogram. That is enough for severe weather. Looking at the exit region of the jet stream here on the 500 millibar mid-level jet, look at how strong it's coming in across this region on the nose of that. And you can see a very strong low-level jet as well in the 850 millibar layer on Tuesday. So this is a day we'll have to keep an eye on because the Euro model, the lightning flash density, is showing a couple lines of storms, and these would be severe in this environment. 
events. So even though the Storm Prediction Center does not highlight that, we do we could be seeing some highlights in the future of some slight, maybe enhanced risks of these days as we do get closer. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe here to Weather on the Go so you have my weather forecast for your area right at your fingertips. Make sure to press the like button. The like button down below is the thumbs up button. I definitely appreciate it. It helps to get all of these weather videos out to more and more people, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Thursday out there.